What's up, y'all? I'm Reed the Fishmonger, and today we're gonna fillet up one of the most underrated fish, greater amberjack. They do get a parasite called a spaghetti worm. We just cut them out, throw them away, eat the rest. These fish are delicious. A part of this fish is actually one of my all-time favorite fish cuts, period. Stoked to show y'all. All right, we're gonna pick up the fin. We're gonna go behind the head at an angle. Look how far up all that meat goes. You don't wanna be cutting down like that. You're missing out on a lot of meat. We're gonna go behind that pectoral fin and separate all the way down. Tip of the knife right at that opening, just the tip. Your knife is almost at 180 degree angle. That way you can slide right down. We're gonna rest our knife right on top of the skeleton and pull towards the head. My knife is resting on the skeleton so I know I'm not losing any meat. Wow, this is a beautiful amberjack. Whoever caught this fish did a great job having it perfectly iced. It got to a refrigerated internal temperature quickly, which you can tell from how beautiful it is. Now that we're at the top of the spine, we're going to Hit the other side at a hard angle, making sure we don't lose any of that delicious meat. And when we're going over those ribs, we're gonna be careful, take a little bit more time with it. Make sure we don't lose that amberjack belly. Amberjack belly is fatty and absolutely delicious. Whew, there's this beautiful fish. And Look at those bright red colors. There's those spaghetti worms we were talking about. I'm telling you guys, if you cook those, they are totally safe. But here, we don't fuss with them. Just cut them out, throw them away, move on with your life. You still have plenty of delicious fish. So many people throw away this entire fish because of that. That's absurd. You know, cod, halibut, some of the most popular fish in the United States are loaded with worms. Some of the fish houses that they're cut in, the fish go on top of light boards, which show the worms, so that way they're picking them out before they go out into the display case. You don't have to do that with this fish. They're concentrating the tail, you cut them out, you throw them away, the rest of it, pristine, beautiful meat. All right, we're gonna put this off to the side and trim it up in a minute for you. Gonna hit the other side, roll her over. Pick up the fin, fuel, where the meat and the headline is and hit right there at a hard angle. We're gonna slide all the way down. Oh yeah. Resting our knife right on that skeleton, we start to slide down. Once we get to the center, use the tip of our knife, just go to the top of that spine, so that way hitting the second side, we don't lose any of that meat. Tip of the knife, base of the ribs, angle it slightly up. Separate the connection the pin bones make to the ribs. Come down at a hard angle. On these larger fish, you often have a little bit of loose skin on the outside. That's a great spot to lift on and hold. And we're sliding down the ribs now. And we wanna, again, take our time, make sure that we don't lose any of that belly meat. It's one of my favorite parts of an amberjack. Now we can close. Now we can pick it up by the tail. Flip it over, beautiful fish right there. There's those spaghetti worms we were talking about. They're concentrated at the tail. Find the last one, go right in front of it, and we'll get rid of that. Now on this one, it's only on this side. So technically, that's great meat right there. Look at the rainbows in that meat. This is gonna be a killer cut. The spaghetti worms are only in this small little piece on this giant fish. Throw that away, you've got loads of meat. Now, we're gonna get on to my favorite part of the entire fish. And that is this meat right here. The collars of amberjack, they've got this meaty texture, but loaded with fat at the same time. So when you get a nice char on the outside, it's just this like meaty, buttery deliciousness. It's banging. If you've never had an amberjack collar, you're truly missing out. This is in the same family as yellowtail jack, which is also called hamachi. Hamachi is a wildly popular fish in sushi restaurants, and this is in the same family. Now we're going to find the collarbone, which is going to be 
attached to this pectoral fin. You find the pectoral fin, fill your finger for the bone, find the end of it. Now that we're at the end of it, slide your knife right underneath that bone, scrape the bone, let the bone guide your knife so that way you don't lose any of the meat. Then here is another part of the pectoral fin. We're gonna slide underneath that. And again, you can see this bone. I hope you can see it, because that's what we're tracing. It's super easy to do. Now we're gonna slide our knife underneath the pelvic fin. It's still attached a little bit, we'll release it. Look at all of the glistening fat in that collar. This is gonna be absolutely delicious. Flip them over. We're gonna repeat the process. We're gonna find that bone, trace it around, and then we can even twist our knife down there and come out. So two different ways to do that. Both are easy to do. And there's your other collar. We got the collars off. We got the fillets, got all the belly meat off. I mean, look at those ribs. There's no belly meat left behind on that guy. And good thing too. It's one of the most delicious parts of the amber check. Just like other fish, you can see what looks like scales and where they end is usually the outline of the cheek. And this is no different. This is bone, this is meat. Can you hear that tapping noise? And then no tapping noise. We're gonna hit that outline, tip of our knife, give it a little flick, continue that trace. And let's see what we got here. Look at the size of that cheek. This isn't even a huge amberjack. It's a nice size one, but it's not humongous. It's actually got a little bit of a funny cartilage right there. All right, there we go. If you guys watched my other videos, you know peeling off the cheeks is one of my favorite noises in fishmongering. Again, I've never cooked an amberjack cheek. I'm excited to cook them with you guys and that video is gonna be right here. All right, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna separate the low loin and the high loin. Easy to do. All you do is follow along that pin bone line all the way down to the skin. There's our low loin. And find that pin bone line, trace it, get as close to those bones as possible, not to waste any of your meat. This line right here, it's nothing but pin bones and blood. But you can see, how bright that blood is. That's a super fresh fish that was well taken care of. We're gonna take the low loin. This is the belly right here. This portion closer to the pin bone line is not the belly. Here's what we're gonna do. We're first gonna separate the lower low loin, trim out some of this membrane. That's an excellent piece of fish right there. Put that off to the side. Now we're going to take the low loin with the belly attached, shave off this membrane. And as you guys can see, as this membrane gets peeled back, look at all of the fat in that fish. This is gonna be absolutely delicious cut. It's one of my you know, preferred things to eat out of fish, period. It's just delicious. You guys ever had cobia? This fish, the belly of an amberjack has some similarities to cobia in the, the meaty, fatty, almost has a mild shellfish flavor from all that fat content. Whew. We're not done yet. What I'm actually gonna do, so that way when I cook this belly, I get a nice flush cook. I'm going to hit it right there, shave that off, now I can lay it flat. That piece of meat is not going to waste. It's gonna get put into smoked fish dip, soups, salads, all kinds of things you can do with all of your trimming. So that way you can provide your customers or yourself with just a primo piece of meat for the grill. If you've never grilled amberjack belly or cooked it in a cast iron pan, you're truly missing out. It's buttery, it's sweet, it's just a killer cut of meat. All right, you guys. Now we're going on to the amberjack high loin. You've got some of this bloody membrane. It's even a little slimy. Totally edible, totally fine, but I just gently shave that off. 
as close to the line as I can, so that way I don't lose out on any of the meat or as little as possible. Look how much prettier that looks now that we've got that little bit of blood shaved off. Here's what we're gonna do with the Amber Jack Hyloin. See where the cut behind the head is? We're gonna hit it right there. And the same with that other piece, it's not going to waste. It's gonna be put into soups, salads, all kinds of things. And now we're going to run down, wipe those scales off, make sure you don't have scales on your knife. We're making Amberjack medallions here, y'all. This is my favorite way to cook Amberjack. Look how good that meat looks, you guys. I'm telling you, Amberjack medallions are the way to go. Absolutely delicious. And if you disagree with me, you probably haven't tried it. So try it, and then if you tried it and you still don't like it, well, you don't have to have it again. All right, you guys, now we're getting on to my favorite part of the entire fish, amberjack collars. They've got this bloody membrane on top, skin on the bottom. We're peeling both of those off. Getting the skin off, you wanna wiggle your knife in there gently. And instead of having your knife at a hard angle down, you wanna just keep it flat, run all the way down, shave it off. Now, taking the membrane off. We're gonna make a slight incision, get underneath that membrane, get a grip on your membrane, and slide down. Get as close to it as you can, so that way you miss out on as little of that delicious meat as possible. We got just about all of it off on that swipe. A Little bit left right there, gone. A Little bit left right there, gone, you guys. I don't know if Cam's camera can pick it up, but dude, the fat in this is off the charts. This is primo stuff, you guys. Just like the high-low medallions, my favorite way to cook this is gonna be in a cast iron pan. Pork fat is my go-to to oil the bottom of my pan. All right, let's take the skin off the other one, wiggle our knife down there, get a good grip on that, and push. And when you don't leave that thin layer, you can get some of that on there. It's not the end of the world, but as little as possible. Get our knife underneath and slide. Get as close to that membrane as you can. Lose as little meat as possible. Always the rule of thumb. And there we go. This one's a little bloodier than the other one. We can trim off a little bit of that for aesthetics. And whew. That is some delicious looking fish right there. You wanna watch us cook all four of these things? Check out the video right there. You don't wanna miss it, especially if you've never tried these cuts before. Hope you guys have a killer rest of your day. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna to go to the grocery store and get ready to cook.